to the Garden of Yusuf. Who? I almost say the Garden of Eve, but this is not the Garden of Eve. So if you can just come a little bit closer, the way we can see you. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to say thank you for taking the time to celebrate two outstanding chaplains promotion to the next rank. It's a great day to be in Yusuf. Who? So I'm going to ask you to. Um, I'm about to give the invocation and to also pray for the food. So you join me as I pray for today's ceremony. Our Heavenly Father, we gather as persons of charge by our nation to promote and protect her interests, defend freedom, and advance the cause of peace. We thank you for the privilege of doing this in the Army, particularly serving in our Institute for Religious Leadership. We are grateful for today. We are grateful for the opportunity to promote Chaplain Lieutenant Colonel Ferner to and Chaplain Major Idaho to the next rank. The first to Colonel and the latter to Lieutenant Colonel. As Moses was told by God to select 70 elders to receive some of the Holy Spirit conferred on him and to share with him the burden of leading the people of Israel, we ask you, O oh God, to grant Chaplain Ferner and Chaplain Idaho a portion of your Holy Spirit. The conviction of integrity, the wisdom to carry out the task of leading your people. May their achievement be consistent with their commission in your truth. May the faith that undergears our country inspire our efforts to preserve the freedoms intended for all people. May their experiences of our guests at this promotion be profitable and enjoyable. Let us learn from one another that we all serve you in our country. Now, as we enjoy the food prepared for us, may you present refresh our spirits. Amen. So I ask that you come in even closer, and if you're in the sun, please get out of the sun, come in the shade. I don't need anybody falling out this morning because I am a Pentecostal preacher and I can talk for 40 minutes and really not say anything. So come on in closer. So this is my first time doing a promotion for two people at the same time. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes this morning. And I wanna welcome you all here today. I especially wanna thank the Ferner family for being here and for the Adderhall family for being here. Your presence makes this even that much more special. So I figured that as a chaplain, getting up and doing a promotion, I need to share the chaplain word of the day with you. So the chaplain word of the day today is potential. Yes, it's okay to look back on where you came from and those experiences that got you here today and the people that helped you along the way. But I wanna challenge you that it's not in your past because you have potential to do greater things for the army. So first from the Old Testament, 1 Samuel chapter 16, we see that God revealed to his prophet Samuel that Israel's true king and Saul's replacement would come from the tribe of Judah and the family line of Jesse of Bethlehem. When Samuel showed up, he looked at seven of Jesse's sons, many who were tall and handsome, probably had good hair. <laughs> one by one, the sons come by, and one by one, Samuel says no. God was clear that outward appearance is never a reliable indicator of inward character. First Samuel 16, seven says, God doesn't see as humans see. Humans see what is outwardly visible, but God sees the heart. And I dare to say that soldiers see badges, tabs and medals, and God doesn't see any of that. God looks in and sees the heart. So Jesse forget, fetches the forgotten son of the bunch who's been out faithfully serving, faithfully watching the sheep, fending off lions and bears without complaint. His name is David, and Samuel looks at this young man and recognizes his potential for greater things. And we discover that he is truly a man after God's heart. Samuel performed the ancient anointing ceremony, pouring his head, pouring over his head in the family room of the house, and it's here that David is appointed the real king of Israel with no fanfare, no crowds, and there's one catch, nobody knows it yet. And the moral of the story comes actually from Chibolic, when the new chaplains ask, what does it take to get promoted? Or is there a secret career path? And my answer is no, not in our human power. We can't control such things or manipulate our way into greater service. 
but we can control how we serve faithfully for God where we're needed with the right attitude and following after God's heart. That's how we show potential for greater service, just like David. Second, since we're both promoting Christian chaplains today, I'm reminded from Matthew how Jesus called his disciples and began his earthly ministry. And what do we learn there? Number one, Jesus got out for some good old fashioned ministry of presence. He was not content to sit in Galilee main post chapel and let others come during office hours. He practiced movement to contact it. He gained and maintained contact with the people. And second, Jesus needed others to help with the mission. He looked for other people with potential. And then Jesus became a coach, teach, and mentor and created a team because teamwork makes the dream work. Number three, Jesus created a learning environment where he took these unschooled fishermen who he saw great potential in and he developed them into an unstoppable force for the early church. To make the team you want, you gotta take the team you're given and you've gotta invest in them with time and other resources. And then we see that Jesus' disciples went on to change the world. Third, because I said three points when preaching, there's three points. There's a parable in Matthew chapter 13. The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard, which a man took and sowed his field, which indeed is smaller than all seeds, but when it's grown, it's greater than the herbs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in its branches. I remember as a child hearing the story, I had to grasp my mind about it because I grew up in New Jersey, we didn't have any mustard plants. But one day my Sunday school teacher told the story and handed us all a tiny little round seed and told us this about the mustard seed. Now by itself, it's just that, it's just a tiny seed. But inside that tiny seed is all this potential to become a big tree, a place of shelter for the birds and a source of wood and even food. For the seed is full of potential, it has to have the right conditions, good soil, water, and light. And today, I wanna to remind you that we're in such a place that has good soil, water, and light here in this garden. And that as we promote you, Chaplain Fern or Chaplain Anderhold, you have both demonstrated potential for the next grade and to lead at the next level. And finally, my poem from Psalm 75. Promotion comes not from the east or the west, from the, or from the north or the south, but from God, who is the judge. God has raised Emmett and Lauren for such a time as this, to impact the soldiers and families and civilians who make up the use of Earl. In our surrounding community, we don't know what is yet to come, but we see the potential. By your ministry and leadership to the, in the new rank of Colonel and Lieutenant Colonel, you will solve a new set of problems, build new teams, and impact the, so, the lives of so many more. My charge to you is be a leader of great character, be a role model for others, and build a team of teams. You won't always get to pick your team, but, but you have what it takes to make the greatest teams. Don't look back and be content with what you've already done. Don't, don't tell war stories for the sake of telling war stories, but look towards the future of your ministry and how you can help bring others along to the place where you've been. We do this all as we live the call for God and country. So with that, let us continue. Attention to orders. The President of the United States has reposed special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelity, and abilities of the following officers. In view of these qualities and their demonstrated potential for increased responsibility, they are therefore promoted in the United States Army as follows. Chaplain Emmett M. Ferner to the rank of Colonel. She asked me if I already took off the, the backings, and I said no. But <laughs> she should be used to this by now. Sorry, honey. Future photographer. I'll hear that. He's staying the rank because I can't get it off. <laughs> well, we tried, folks.
I brought Chris Perry for just such <laughs> a time as this. <laughs> Audience, you can relax. Did you take yours off? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> At least I have that. <laughs> <laughs> you can't take this off either, right? <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> That's so far. We'll see. Oh yeah, yeah. And Chaplain K. Lauren Adderhall to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. Effective date, 1 October 2023, by order of the Secretary of the Army. Support and defend. That I will support and defend. Constitution of the United States. Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith. That I will bear true faith. And allegiance to the same. And allegiance to the same. And I take this obligation freely. I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. For purpose of evasion. For purpose of evasion. That I will well and faithfully. That I will well and faithfully discharge the duties. Discharge the duties of the office. Of the office upon which I'm about to enter. Upon which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Okay. okay. <laughs> if you need to hold on, I keep Lauren at her hold. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support and defend. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And allegiance to the same. And that I take this obligation freely. And that I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. And that I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of the office. Of the office. Upon which I'm about to enter. Of which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. <laughs> Hey, thanks everyone for coming. I'll, I'll be real brief. Um, here's the phenomenon. If you know me well enough, this is not, I, I, I'm, the, I'm the guy that if I get a PCS award, I'd rather get it in the mail than stand in front of folks and have somebody pin something on me. It's not my personality, but but every time I would say, hey, I want to just do something real small, somebody would say, oh, it's your promotion ceremony, and it is. 
something would be added. So that's just kind of how it works in the art. I understand that too. But, it, but, but having a promotion ceremony allows me to do three things. One is to thank the non-commissioned officers in my life uh, that, uh, uh, that I wouldn't be able to do what I do without. I'll start with my father, uh, Sergeant Emmett Ferner Sr. We lost his right leg in Vietnam. Um, he's my hero, still is. Um, his service and sacrifice uh, to our country um, is an example for me. Um, Sergeant Van Davis, Bud Brown, um, Sergeant Lopez, um, uh, Sergeant Van Bremer, uh, um, Sergeant Ryan Rojas, uh, and on and on. Uh, without the non-commissioned officers, well, they are the backbone of the Army. And they were always the backbone of my ministry. Uh, the second thing is my, um, my wife, Michelle. Thank you for doing this with me. <laughs> been a ride. Thank you. I told her not much longer, so we hang in there. <laughs> hang in there. Just a little, yeah, you're good. Um, so I love you. You're the most beautiful woman, and I thank God for you. Thank you. And then finally, uh, my God. And I think I, I really just will just read from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1. And I, when I came to you, brothers, I did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit of power so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men but in the power of God I've never had anything other than the Christ and him crucified to offer the United States Army and its soldiers and its, their families I do all of this for that one single purpose it's the gospel of Jesus Christ I have to do a whole bunch of other things obviously to get to that one thing but I hope I never miss that one thing um, that makes it all worthwhile in the end um, could I ask uh, Jeremy Mount just come up here real quick yeah, look, he doesn't want to, does he? Um, I, think I, I think I just know a leader that we put these to good use, so uh -oh. I know that you'll be uh -oh. aware of these one day. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Promoted in a cast, this will be a memory for sure. <laughs> um, also from 1 Corinthians. Who sees anything different in you? What do you have that you did not receive? And if you received it, why do you boast as if you did not receive it? And from James, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like the shifting shadows. First and foremost, I too would like to thank my God, our God, for all his gifts, for salvation through his only begotten Son, Jesus for inclusion in a family of faith, for the daily blessings of family, help, and for provision. For Sheila, after almost 26 years, it's still a strange thing to wake up to a set of pigtails in the morning. <laughs> and, uh, and that is, doing so though is a sacrament in the greatest sense of the word. It reminds me of God's great, unfailing love for me and his faithfulness. Thank you for always pointing me to him. Our sons can't be here today. They're both at school. They better be in class. <laughs> and uh, Dennis, I just want to say I love your adventurous spirit. And Dakota, I love your love for learning. And uh, both of you have paid more than anyone else in our family uh, for this calling to the military. And I want to say thank you and I love you both. Mom and Dad, I'm so glad you guys could be here today. Somebody asked me a couple months ago, where did you get your work ethic from? And you all immediately came to mind. So I want to thank you for modeling that. Uh, when no one else is looking and when no one else is willing to be responsible, it's used in my daily activities. Patrick and Ariel, Braxton, thanks for getting them up here. I really appreciate you guys being here as well. Anita, my mother-in-law, uh, has taken me in as her own. She's not able to be here because of some health issues. Uh, but my greatest joy today really doesn't come from this promotion, but from news we received just a couple weeks ago that her cancer is in remission. 
and that she's healing, and we rejoice in that today, particularly Anita. Um, but too many Army leaders and peers to name, uh, and uh, after 19 years, but every one of them invested in me, and any good that you see as a leader, it's, it's a reflection of them. Uh, most memorable is Matt Goff and Amy Goff, uh, the first ones who ministered what it means to be a chaplain and, and a pastor to those around you. Some of you in particular standing here have been a great encouragement to me for the last couple of years. And I just want to say to you specifically, you will never know what a difference you have made in my life. Finally, to my DRM team, you guys are an amazing group of capable, competent and committed professionals and nobody loves use rule like you do and uh, I just want to say I'm honored to serve with you and I'm grateful for the love that you guys have shown me and all of that said you are all a gift and I thank God for you uh, I believe Emma has a few last words beautiful daughters here today. I totally, oh my goodness. Honey. Thank you. For uh, Austin, uh, Eli, and, and Alec, who can't be here, and Isabella, they were in this journey with me too. So, sorry about that. All right, so I'm saying between you and Chick-fil-A, I guess. Um, so Lauren on Friday at like 1730 called me and said, hey, uh, can you uh, can you roast us uh, at our promotion ceremony? And uh, I said sure. Yeah, he even wrote me a few jokes. Uh, uh, but I, you know, I think the fountain speaks for itself, really. Uh, D room. Uh, um, so I'm super uh, happy to be able to give a final word of benediction, a blessing of sending forth uh, for both of you. Uh, you've been dear friends, uh, and um, obviously promotion well-deserved. You're already filling the roles and responsibilities, uh, and uh, will continue to do wonderful work. Um, what I think Lauren forgot when he asked me to do this uh, was that uh, I've been arguing for a number of years that chaplains shouldn't be wearing rank, and so why are we even having a ceremony such as this? <laughs> And so I'd be remiss if I didn't take this opportunity to share this fantastic quote from uh, Bishop Brent, uh, the World War I era chaplain, uh, that General Pershing, uh, uh, that uh, was General Pershing's chaplain and, and uh, asked him to petition the War Department to have rank removed from chaplains, and, and he did. And so upon the publication of that order in Stars and Stripes in the middle of the war, uh, uh, this is what uh, Bishop uh, Brent wrote. The army chaplain is simply a minister of religion performing his duties under military conditions. Though he may be a commissioned officer, his military rank is conferred merely as a means of fitting him to best advantage into the army system. Men are of divided opinion as to the desirability of rank for chaplains. In the British Navy, for instance, chaplains have no rank. With us, they have rank from first lieutenant up to lieutenant colonel until a recent enactment by Congress, the highest grade for chaplains was major. But whether with or without rank, the commission by which the chaplain acts is the supreme commission of the ministry of the church, which he represents, and of the one commander of all the army of God. According to recent regulations, he is not to wear the insignia of rank. Why should he? His function remains unaltered, whether he be lieutenant or colonel. But he is to be distinguished by the cross on his collar, which signifies the unchangeable commission of his unchangeable office. Uh, gentlemen, you have been given a tremendous opportunity for continued ministry in uniform. As you continue to minister under military conditions, May you remember that the commission by which you have been called into this work is the commission of God alone. And may you, may you continue to be distinguished, not by your rank, but by the cross.
And so, friends, as we go forth, hold fast to the words of Jesus in Mark chapter 10. Among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lorded over them and their great ones are tyrants. But it is not so among you. Whoever wishes to be great among you must first be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to serve, came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. This concludes today's ceremony. Please take the moment to congratulate the promotees, and after that, enjoy the fellowship and the welcome center. Thank you.